In this video, we will be making two types of pot supports for alcohol stoves that are easy to make, extremely compact, and most importantly, very inexpensive. If you're interested in seeing how I make them, stay tuned. Okay, quickly, before we get started, I wanted to just give you a short backstory on why I'm making these alcohol stove pot stands. Well, it has everything to do with the season here in Nova Scotia. We're just entering into high summer and the temperatures are starting to rise. But since early March, Nova Scotia has been under a fire ban. There have been one or two days where the fire ban has lifted because we've had some rain. But very soon after the rain, the woods dry right up and they are tinder dry. I can tell you that. So I haven't been able to have a fire. I'm not even allowed to use my, my small wood stoves like my Lixada or my firebox stove. Even those are not permitted during the fire ban. So what am I left with? Well, I'm left with either a Canada gas stove or one of the white gas stoves or an alcohol stove, which is my preference. I like using alcohol stoves. They take a little longer, but they're quiet. So knowing that I'm going to be using alcohol stoves, I started digging out the ones that I had and I thought, you know, I think I could probably make a video that somebody might be interested in seeing on how to make pot stands for those alcohol stoves. So the two styles of pot stands that we're going to make for alcohol stoves involve two different materials. Well, to start with, they are all going to involve skewers, dollar store skewers, barbecue skewers, which I find to be extremely useful for a number of projects. But bent into shape and then attached on one side, we can turn them into an alcohol pot stand or alcohol stove pot stand. So one style is going to involve a wire wrap around the end, which will create the hinge that we need to hold the pot stand together and allow it to move apart. And the other one is going to use small aluminum sleeves on the end and it's going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to make both of these today and you can decide which one is probably easier or more convenient for you to make. All right, let's get started. All right, for the first style of pot stand that we're going to make, we need a few things and I'll explain what those are and then we'll go into the process. First and foremost, you need an alcohol stove. So for the purpose of the video and from the project I'm going to do today, I'm going to be using my Alox, which is a knockoff Trangia stove. But you can use virtually any alcohol stove at all for this project, anything that requires a pot stand. And yes, I know some alcohol stoves have the pot stand built right into them. And that's great. And I have some of those, the Fancy Feast and a few other styles like that. The Trangia does not. It requires some type of an external pot stand. You can't lay your pots directly on top of it. So that's why I'm choosing to use this one today. So I have that. Next I need a, for this project I'm going to be using skewers, barbecue skewers that you can pick up at one of the dollar stores. I picked these up at Dollarama here in Halifax. A dollar fifty got me a package of eight and these are good quality stainless steel skewers. I have mentioned this in other videos but they have been valuable, valuable in so many different projects. One of the things I like to use them is for bales on pots so they stand up for that quite well. Pot stands is another another project that I use them for. So let me take the full package and set that aside. So I have the two that I'm going to be using today. Next, you're going to need some type of measuring device. I will be using a ruler, but a measuring tape works just fine. I have two markers with me today. They're both Sharpie pens. One's thicker than the other, and I'm going to be using both. One so you can see the thicker lines that I draw on paper in a moment. But the other one, I'm using a fine point. I'm going to be using that to mark directly on the skewer so that I get as accurate a measurement as possible. You're going to need some way of bending the skewers. And I have two pair of pliers here, a needle nose and a slip joint plier that I, I'm going to be using, or I could use. But for this project, I'm going to be using my bench vise. This is just an inexpensive bench, bench vise that I, or vent, inexpensive bench vise that I picked up a number of years ago. And it just makes the job a little easier. One thing I don't have here on the table is a hammer that I'll be using to tap the, the skewers and bend them in when we put them in the vise, but I'll show you that. Put that aside. And the last thing we need for this first project and what differentiates it from the second one is wire. So this is a spool of very inexpensive 20 gauge hardware wire. It is a galvanized wire. Also very inexpensive at the uh, dollar store here. $1.25 gets me 150 feet inside of this spool. And again, this is great for a lot of the projects that I use. So we'll be using that today as well. All right, what do we need to do? Let's put these aside. So one of the first things we need to do is to decide how big a pot stand we want. 
how wide do we want the pot stand to be when it's made so that it will support pots. This can be a bit of an arbitrary number. I mean, one of the best ways to do this is to look at the types of pots you're going to be using over your pot stand and get a sense of how wide you feel the top of it needs to support, uh, ac adequately support the pot that you're going to be using. So I've chosen four inches for the top. It could be bigger, it could be a little bit smaller. Uh, definitely a little bit bigger would give you a little bit more options for using larger pots. You can use the smallest pot of, as you want on these, but the larger the stand is, the larger the pot you can use. I chose four inches as a nice compromise because it will work with the pots that I carry with me most of the time, and it's still packable. It's small enough that I can slide it in with the alcohol stove or in with my pot and not take up too much space. Next thing you need to know is how tall to make this when it sets off of the ground. So in order to determine that, you have to know how tall your alcohol stove is. So what I wanted to do was to measure from the ground to the top of the jets on the Trangia, or in this case the Alux knockoff. And I did that, and that comes in at 1 and 5 eighths inch. So that's my base height. I know it's 1 and 5 eighths inch. What I want to do is create a pot stand that stands just about one inch off the top of that. One inch is the known to be the sweet spot where you get the most efficiency from most alcohol stoves. So that's what I'm going to be aiming for. If it ends up a tiny bit short, that's fine. If it ends up a tiny bit tall, that's fine. But one inch is the goal I'm going to aim for here. Finally, I'm going to turn the bottom of the pot stand legs in a little tiny bit, a half inch on each end, and that'll just give me a little support to keep it from being pushed into any soft earth. Just makes it a little bit more stable, that's all. So, I need to transfer those lines. Make sure you can see what I've got here. I need to transfer those lines onto the skewer with a marker. And I have done that. This is not going to show up, I don't think, on the camera. But I know the overall length that I need to have is 10 and a quarter inches and very nicely these come in at just about, just under 13 inches of usable length if you don't include the uh, little crook at the end. So I have that measured, I have my total length and I have it measured along the way. One thing I did mention is how I'm going to cut this to length. I need to get 10 and a quarter inches out of this 13 inch bar. For me, I'm going to be using a Dremel tool, but you could also use a hacksaw if that's what you have. If you don't have a Dremel tool, you can use wire cutters as well on these. I will tell you that this is tough material. Bolt cutters would make it a lot easier. So either bolt cutters, a hacksaw, or a Dremel tool if you have those. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to cut these to length and then I'll show you how I'm going to bend them. Okay, before we go to the next step, which is bending the stainless steel skewers into shape, a couple of things. First off, I failed to mention, and I apologize for that, is safety equipment. Like any other project where you're using tools, especially anything that time you're working with metal or any other sharp or you know, hard material, make sure you protect your eyes and your ears. I chose to use a Dremel tool, which of course is a high pitch sound. I always wear hearing protection when using my Dremel tool. I also wear eye protection when I'm working with it because of the sparks and flying bits of metal. So that's always a good piece of safety equipment. You may want to go the step further if you want to wear gloves. Uh, the ends of these do get very hot when you're using a Dremel tool because it is stainless steel. Okay, beyond that, the next thing I wanted to say is uh, at when I finish cutting them off, it does leave a bit of a rough edge on the very tip of the bar. And that's easily remedied with, by taking a little bit of a fine, fine grit sandpaper. In my case, I used, I think it was a, probably a four or 600 grit paper, and just rub the ends of it to take off any sharp edges. Now, the benefit of that is not just that it looks neater, it's also that it doesn't catch on anything and rip anything inside of your backpack. So it's nice to have those things just a little smoothed off on the ends. The other thing that occurred, of course, is I had placed the marker, the Sharpie marks, on the bar before I started working with it, and my hands rubbed it off. So I did have to go back and re-mark the bar again with the Sharpie, and I decided to do it with a little thicker mark this time in the hopes that you'll be able to see where the marks are. So half inch, and then two and five-eighths, and again half inch in from the end, two and five-eighths, leaving me a four-inch bar in the middle. All right, how are we going to bend this? Using the vise, and I could just as easily, well, I won't say just as easily because that's not quite true. It's a little harder to bend these with 
the pliers, but it is doable, especially if you have two good sturdy pair of pliers. What I like to do and try to get them as identical as possible is to bend both of them at the same time. So it'll take me a second to line these up and I'm going to get them in the vise and I like to bend the half inch bars or the half inch foot if you will extension at the bottom of each bar do them first. So I need to line that up in my vise so that they are perfectly straight up and down. I leave I put the bar right or the line right in at the top of the vise now, something you should know about bending wire, if you haven't done this before, is it will never bend exactly perfect. It, you will always get a little bit of a loss, is the way I like to explain it or, or describe it. A little bit of a loss in your length, because some of that um, length of your bar is caught up in the curve. It's not a straight, perfect 90 degree angle. It is more of a curve on the edge. So you, you lose a little tiny bit of length. Not enough to make a eff big effect on, especially this type of a project where it is not a, as need to be that precise. All right, let's just see. Trying to get that to be as precise as possible. It's still on the line. All right, yeah, we've done that. Tighten it up. Now I am working on a bit of a a table here that's not ideal for doing this so it's probably gonna bang and jolt around a little bit as I do it. I just have a nice little machine hammer, ball peen hammer that I can use and I'm just gently going to start pushing them over and once I get it started I'm working as close to the vise as I can take a look and see how close to 90 degrees I am make sure the bars are still aligned And there we are, right at 90 degrees. Perfect. That's just what I wanted. Okay. All right. So that is the foot on one end now created. So they're about a half inch. They look like they might be slightly longer, but that's what I meant about you either gain length or lose length when you do this in a vise. So I could have just as easily used my pliers, uh, two pair of sturdy pliers. It is more work, but it's very doable. So I'm going to bend the rest of this, these two bars into the final shape that I want, and I'll bring you back. Okay, done. Or at least I've folded the two bars. So here are the two bars. They didn't come out perfect, but they came out pretty darn close. And one of the nice things about working with this material is if you take it out of your vise or you take it away from your pliers and you look at it and you say, ah, that's slightly out of alignment. They're soft enough that you can bend them around and get them into place. And I find that when you go to use these, it's not important that they're absolutely identical because remember, likely you're going to be using this on uneven ground or on top of a rock, maybe on a log or maybe on a board if you're so lucky, but it won't make a lot of difference if they're slightly, slightly out of alignment. So you can see they fit pretty much right on top of my drawing and that's what I was looking for. So great. Okay, let me put my drawing aside. Next step, how do I attach them together? All right, so for this version, we're gonna be using the wire. And the way we're gonna use wire is we're gonna create a whipping around one end or two of the down portion of the, the stand. A whipping just like you would do with paracord or any other string. So to do that, to start with, and for this, I am gonna be using needle nose pliers. I find them the easiest to use. I am going to take a length of about three and a half, four inches, doesn't need to be precise and I'm just creating a small loop. As you can see, I just have a small loop here. Hopefully that shows up on camera. You can bring it fairly close together. I the loop is gonna be longer, or the, the tag end on this loop right here, this portion, is gonna be longer than the finished project is because I need to be able to grab onto that once I am finished. Now, you can see I'm lining it up on the ends of the bars. This is a little bit fiddly. It takes a little bit of uh, manipulating back and forth. And of course, when you're doing it on camera, it just makes it that much more awkward. So I'll try to do the best I can for you to see what I'm doing. But it won't line up right away. So, I mean, yes, I could put this in the vise. It's probably the easier way to do it. But if you don't have a vise, I wanted to show you that you could do it without the vise. I'm going to line that up on the outside of the bars. And then I'm going to start wrapping it around and around until I get the length of wrap that I want. So I'll need to bend that to start it. 
As you can see now, I've left about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch tag end sticking out here because I'm going to be grabbing onto that later with this, with the pair of pliers. So what I need to do, lay this on. Again, trying to stay in frame so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm starting at the bottom and I'm working my way towards the top. Now, the first couple of wraps are the most awkward because things want to move on you as you do this. So if you can get a couple of wraps on, now then you can start working to get it tight. You want it tight, it doesn't have to be as tight as you can possibly make it. You could use pliers if you want to get that extra tension, but it's not necessary. Try to keep your wraps as close together as reasonable. If this was so tight that I couldn't uh, move the two uprights apart to create the V, then uh, that would be counterproductive. So it's not necessary to be that tight in order for this to work. And the length of the wrap does not have to be the full height either. Eh, half the wrap or half the height is fine. I'm okay, going to slide this up a, the bars a little bit to try to get it into the center. It takes a bit of wire to do this. That's why I didn't cut the wire off because I wasn't sure how long it would take. I'll just keep wrapping it. See, my bars are kind of moved to their position a little bit, but that's not hard to to fix here. There we go. Keep wrapping. When I get the wrap close to the length I want, I'll bring it back and we'll go to the next step. Okay, I have my wrap. The total wrap length is about half of the total length from here to here. And again, that's a bit arbitrary. I could probably gotten away with a little less. You could go the full length. It really doesn't make that much difference in terms of functionality. So what I have left now is I'm going to, well, first I'm going to cut some of this wire off. And how much? Probably as long as this wrap is, that's what you need to cut off. If you cut off a little extra, that's fine because you can always snip it off later. So I'm just cutting that to get it out of the way. So here's what I have now. I have the loop that I started protruding out to the end. I have the wrap where I finished just at the base of the loop. And then I have the tag in where I started protracting out. So I'm going to take this longer piece and it's not as easy as if you're doing it with paracord and I'm sliding it through that loop. And what's going to happen now, and this is not all that easy, but it can be done, is I'm going to take my pliers, that little short tag again, I'm going to wrap my pliers around it a little bit because I want to get some purchase on it. And basically, I'm going to try and pull some of this wire down inside. So it's a bit of a struggle to see if I can do this. It does require a little bit. I'm trying to do it on camera, of course. One way you could do this, of course, is just wrap it up as if you're uh, wrapping up a uh, the old-fashioned tuna can lids. And that works quite well. So the wire is being pulled inside of the loop or inside of the coil. It's also bringing the coil together tighter as we go. There, and it got to a point where it broke itself off. And that's fine, okay. I do have to get that off my pliers now, so. There you go. So here's what I'm left with. I do have a little tiny piece, or piece of the tag end sticking out here, which I'll either bend down or cut off. If i got enough, if I've got wire cutters, I can reach in and cut it off. I just elect it to fold it into the leg so it's not catching on, any, on anything. My loop went to the top of the coil right here. It didn't actually get pulled down inside the coil, but that's fine. Again, it's perfectly functional like that. Now I do have to cut off as close as I can get down to the loop. And that is a finished pot stand. You just, when you want to use it, open it up, place it over top of your stove, put your pot on top. 
So that's one version of a simple DIY pot stand for alcohol stoves made with two skewers and some inexpensive wire. Now, let's go to the other version. Okay, for the second version of our alcohol stove pot stand, again, we're going to be using two skewers. But this time, we're going to, instead of the wire, we're going to be using aluminum sleeves. And the aluminum sleeves that I chose for working with the skewers is a 3 seconds inch. And you can buy these at most local hardware stores. I picked them up here at Canadian Tire in Halifax. And you can see from the drawing how useful they are for connecting cable wire, such as aircraft cable wire, which I've used these before when making pots, uh, bales out of wire or any other attachment. So the 330 seconds is the size that I'm going to use. So this does cr uh, put an added expense to your overall project. But I will tell you, it's going to make it much easier to assemble. You don't have to go through the whipping process. So the way you're going to use this is you're going to slide the, the two little aluminum sleeves onto the skewers. And I'm just putting them on here for demonstration purposes right now because, of course, we haven't bent these into shape. And you can see that they will slide right onto the skewer. And now all that's really required is to measure. Well, first, of course, cut it to the right length, but measure and bend the skewers into the right length so that we have the same shape we had in the last pot stand. And then we'll need to tighten up on the skewers to get them a little tighter against the, or tighten up on the sleeves to get them a little tighter against the skewer. So I'll bend these into shape and I'll, well, then we'll go from there. All right, so what I have done is I've taken the liberty of sliding the two aluminum sleeves onto one side of the pot stand. You can see they're moving freely here. Uh, just a word of uh, note, make sure you put the sleeves on before you bend, especially the feet, before you bend those feet. Otherwise, you're not, not going to get the sleeves on. So it's just a little bit of... Uh, a cautionary note there. So you can see they're moving moving freely. So what I want to do now is I want to tighten those two sleeves up so that they apply some tension to the bar on the end. A couple of ways you could do this, at least a couple of ways. One way would be to take a hammer and start place it on a flat surface and tap it until the aluminum bends down and starts to grip onto it. Alternatively, you could you could use a vise, which is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to use a vise, and I'm sure there are other ways as well. Probably even a good pair of pliers would squeeze down on it. In fact, there is a crimping tool available. If you have one, that's great. I didn't. I didn't want to spend the extra money for this project. I didn't think it was necessary. But there is a crimping tool designed specifically for crimping those against wire primarily. Okay, so I'm going to be using my vise today. And it's going to take a bit of fiddling because what I want to accomplish is to have one of the sleeves near the top and the other sleeve near the bottom where the feet are. So I'm going to have to fiddle until I get them in the right position. Then I'm going to slowly use the vise to tighten up on it, check in every so often to see that I've got the right amount of tension. I don't want to flatten them so much that I can't move the, the arms or the tops, the bars apart when I, when I want to use it. So I'll check from there and then I'll bring it back. Okay, so there is the finished project. Now you can see that the two sleeves have been crimped on quite tightly, but not so tight that I can't move the burrs apart freely. And uh, yeah, okay, so that's done. Now I guess the proof is, will it work? Well, let's go back to our Trangia, or Alex in this case, and set the pot stand down and put a pot on top of it and Perfect, just exactly what I want. Now, the nice thing about this is, besides being so flat, compact, and easy to make, is that it still allows me to use the simmer ring. I can reach right in from the side, place the simmer ring on if that's what I want to do, and it'll work just fine. And of course, that also means that I can reach in and snuff it out without having to touch the hot pot stand. Works just fine. All right, and the other one, the one with the wire wrap around the end, also, exactly what I want. Good sized pot sitting on top, nice and stable, just at the optimal height. Snuff it out. When it's cold, fold it up and you're ready to go. All right, let's wrap this video up. So I've completed two very easy to make alcohol pot stands. One made with a wire wrap, and one made with aluminum sleeves. And you know, while I was making this, I started to consider those aluminum sleeves are actually pretty handy. What else could I be doing with those aluminum sleeves? 
Well, I found that they do come in different sizes. I have one here that has a 3 16 inch diameter hole and one here that has a 1 quarter inch diameter hole. I just happen to have some bar stock here at home as well in those two sizes. I'm thinking I could probably make a stand that I can put right in a fire to support a bot in. But that's a project for another video. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of these simple, inexpensive DIY projects, you may consider subscribing to my channel. But until the next time, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.